Let's build out an elastic beanstalk configuration here. First though, let's look at the architecture of what it does. Elastic Beanstalk is a platform as a service offering. What that means is that all of the heavy lifting of the deployment is, is operationalized for you. So how would you do this? First, you would use the Cloud9 environment and install the EB tool, which we'll go through. So we'll go to a GitHub repo that has the latest code from Amazon, and that will allow us to install this command line tool that will orchestrate behind the scenes an entire ecosystem that we can deploy an application to. Then this EB tool will be hooked up here and it will deliver directly the, the Flask application to this infrastructure. There'll be a load balancer here and this load balancer will uh, give us uh, essentially an entire ecosystem of virtual machines uh, that are wired together to accept the appropriate requests. And also the Flask application will be ready to go. So this is a very typical pattern a platform as a service offering is there'll be a extremely powerful command line tool. That command line tool will provision instances behind the scenes and then allow us to really easily deploy an application. You see this in other cloud platforms as well, like uh, GCP has Google App Engine and the Azure platform has app services. So this is a great pattern for many different uh, companies because you don't have to do this anymore. This is handled by your service provider and it really adds a lot of value and uh, increases your ability to, to build things quicker. One of the best ways to get started with the Elastic Beanstalk command line interface is to spin up an EC2 instance running Cloud9, which we have here. AWS Cloud9, and then also install it locally here. And so the official instructions will give you a link to a GitHub repo, which will have the latest version of the installer. To install it, if we go to that repo, uh, you would need to uh, do a yum install if you're on Amazon Linux of these packages, and then also go through a clone this repo and then run their installer. So I've already done that to speed things up. And if you notice, I can type in this command, eb, that's just help, and we've got this thing running. So that's one of the great things about these platform as a service command line tools is it builds this you know, incredible infrastructure to uh, build out an application with. So to get started, uh, I'm going to follow uh, step by step here the uh, steps to set up a new Elastic Beanstalk environment. So the first thing I'll do is I'll say make dir uh, eb flask. Uh, next up, I'll cd into that directory. Uh, I'll go ahead and create a virtual environment. And notice, in this case, actually, I'll use Python 3-m virtual environment. Uh, and I can just say a virtual environment like this. And typically, I don't put a virtual environment in my directory, but I'll show you why I'm doing this in a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and source this. Virtual, virtual environment, bin activate. And then next up, I'll do an installation. So uh, I can actually do a pip install of a Flask uh, 102. So I'll get a very specific version. Great, and then I can also run pip freeze. And what this will show me is that these are the different packages that were installed in that Flask application. So uh, next up, uh, I'll go ahead and write those freeze requirements out to a requirements.txt file. And this is nice because if we go and we look at this particular environment here, and I, I look inside of EB Flask, you'll see that it's a great way to get version numbers by installing and then saying freeze. Okay, now we're ready to go to the next step here, which is to create an application file. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll say touch application.py to create an empty file. And I've already got one inside of this repo here, Noah Gift Flask Elastic Beanstalk. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cut and paste this application and explain it. So I'll go through here, copy this, and put this into our environment. So we'll open this file up and paste it in. So let's look at what this does. It doesn't do a lot. It's intentionally very simple here, but um, this application will uh, first uh, import Flask. So we'll say from Flask, import Flask. 
Uh, and then next, it'll also uh, go through here and create a new app. In this case, this will be the uh, Flask application here. And then uh, it will return back a Hello World route. So all this does is say, I'm inside of Flask and returns back a route here. And then this URL, this is a route that will allow us to accept a name parameter or any variable basically, and then we'll return it back out as a JSON dictionary, just right here. So this is a great way to test out something really simple. One does nothing, one accepts something and just returns it back out. And uh, I can I can test this next by running it locally. So that's that's typically the, the first thing that you'd want to do in a Flask app uh, before you try out the deployment. So we'll say uh, Python application.py. Uh oh, so we know we have we've got a, an issue here uh, in, in in that it says application is not set up. So how would we go ahead and say that set that up? Oh well, we need to just change this to application. So that's what that warning was. There we go. Uh, and then the same thing can go for the routes. We could go through here and say application, route, and then also application, route. So this is one of the nice things about using this development environment is it shows us all the bugs. Great, let's run it again. Okay, we've got this running locally. And then if I wanted to, I could actually very quickly prototype this by um, doing a curl command uh, in a new terminal. So we'll go here and I'll just do this. I'll just say curl. And look, there we go, hello world works. And if I, if I put in name Bob, we can see that, um, what did I have here? I think I had, oh, uh, echo. If I say echo Bob, it's a return back Bob. There we go, perfect. So we, we've got a, a successful working application and now we're ready to deploy it. So the next step in order to deploy this application would be to use um, uh, the EB uh, environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first clean things up locally here. Notice that I have this virtual environment and we don't want to check that into our Elastic Beanstalk. So how are we going to fix this? Well, we'll create a file called uh, .ebignore and this will allow us to ignore that file. So I can either edit it in Vim uh, or I could edit it in um, my editor. But the, the gist of this is we want this ignored. <coughs> Three, two, one. Okay, we've got this thing written out and we're gonna ignore it. And now I'll need to create a new environment and in order to do that, what I can do here is uh, say uh, ebinit-p, so make a Python 3.6 Flask tutorial uh, environment. Uh, and uh, I could say Flask tutorial, or you know, maybe, maybe easily I'll say Flask uh, cloud data, right? That's a good, good name for our project. And this will go behind the scenes and wake up uh, basically what I need my Flask environment to do. And then what we can do is um, create this. So let's go ahead and uh, create this environment. So we'll go ahead and say uh, here, we'll say uh, Flask uh, Cloud Data Environment. There we go. So behind the scenes now, it's taking everything that we had local and it's doing a deployment process. So it took that uh, that initial uh, init, looked inside of there and said, okay, what do I need to create here? I need to create a new environment uh, inside of EC2 and it'll deploy it in US West 2. Uh, and then uh, it'll go through here and uh, create a uh, particular load balancer. It'll create the security group. So these are all things that I would have to normally do by myself if I was setting up a Python based web application, but it's all done automatically for me just because I was able to use that command line tool. And so this would mean it would create EC2 instances, security groups, load balancers, auto scaling group, the S3 bucket, CloudWatch alarms, also uh, the infrastructure as code with uh, CloudFormation stack. So 
it does a lot of work for me behind the scenes. And if I wanna go ahead and look at it, one of the ways I can, I can look at it is by typing in EB open once it's ready to go. Let's switch over to Elastic Beanstalk now. And you'll notice that this Elastic Beanstalk environment is in a pending state. And now it's the pending state has switched to OK. And from here, I actually can see the entire setup of my Elastic Beanstalk environment. And then if I want to test it out, I can right click on this and say open link. And this will show us that uh, this, this Beanstalk application is ready to go. And if I want to test out that route, if I want to make this uh, a little bit bigger, I can go here and can say echo, uh, and we'll call this Bob. There we go. And we see that, that, that my service is working successfully. Maybe we'll do Sally. There we go. So our, our service here was very easily created with this Elastic Beanstalk command line tool, and it created a sophisticated cloud-based development environment that has all the bells and whistles that I would need, including load balancing and health checks and other things. So I, I would recommend uh, Elastic Beanstalk. I think it's a great application for building out you know, environments that you are, don't have to manage yourself. So let's go here and clean this up. What's the last thing I would need to do to clean this up? Well, I would type in uh, EB terminate, and this will get rid of my environment so that I'm not charged for it. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll type in take this name here, which is the uh, the name of the environment, and I'll say EB terminate Flask Cloud Data Environment. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, type this again so that it knows that I really am serious about terminating it. So let's go ahead and do this. And now it's going to clean this up behind the scenes. And you can see that this is going to clean this up because if I go back to my Elastic Beanstalk environment, uh, and we go back to the interface here, and I refresh it, you'll see that it'll it'll start to uh, kind of take this thing out and, and remove it. It'll take a little bit of time for all the resources to be cleaned up, but this is an important part of prototyping, is that you wanna make sure that you delete the resources that you set up so that you're not charged for those.